The Nice House on the Lake, issue 5, James Town the 4th, Alvaro Martinez on the art, and things are heating up. This really felt like it was a propel the story forward moment, uh, where after three issues of individual character, I mean the first one kind of was, but the first one was about interesting as to everyone, so I'd say two through four were very much individual character stories that really focused on one character primarily. This one... I think was all about finally the group of characters all coming together and really talking about what was going on in their world, which in their timelines about a month, but I think it's like day 31 or 32. And well, potentially, but potentially. Yeah. Well, I assume they've been tallying things properly. Uh, no, I am. I, I meant the, the, there's just a little hint of the stuff with the stars that maybe time isn't quite what it seems. Relative to their experience as a month. Uh, I, I will... That's all I mean. I will, I will allow that statement. Yes, I, I, that's all I mean, is, is how long they have experienced uh, in time. Um, and I, I presume that if like days were longer or something, they would notice that fairly quickly. <laughs> Unless all of the watches and clocks were all designed to move slower so no one noticed. <laughs> it, it's not impossible. <laughs> uh, but it sets up, uh, so this is the scientist issue. Uh, which I only know because they eventually showed the symbols again and I was able to go back and check <laughs> what this issue symbol was. Uh, that really needs to be at the start of every issue. There used to be a key page at the start, just with that. I, that... I'm still annoyed at them making that a variant cover on a reprint. Oh, it's, it's so annoying. But yeah, so, so there's some teases from like the later in the timeline again, with the house seemingly on fire, uh, with the scientists watching on and talking about... Uh, Basically, the history with Walter, how Walter got kind of weird because she became a part of the group that she wasn't in, you know, originally. Um, started dating Nora uh, before Nora's transition and all, all that stuff. So kind of, kind of hinting at some of the things we knew about. But we, then we come to the main story, and it's the characters discussing the big revelation from last issue, which was they can't die. If they do something to, to get injured, it heals. I, uh, I really like the touch of just how it transitioned us into that. Like, because uh, we'd get the, the transcript page again, which reminds us one, that the transcript page is still happening. Mm -hmm. Two, you get the, the, the first half of that page is the scene of where we were at the end of the last issue. So it, like, it's, it's almost like having a recap where it just plays back the last part of that scene almost. So you go, oh, yeah, that's where we were. And then it continues from that. I think, it, I think it's just a really smart technique. Yeah, and it overlaps a little bit when you go into the actual comic where the last couple of lines are, you know, we see them in panel again yeah. uh, for context. Um, but basically, it's uh, the writer, I believe, who says, look, if if I hadn't been patched up, because we've got a doctor here, right? And the doctor patched me up on day one. But if they hadn't done that, then we would have actually learned this rule right at the start. We'd have learned that our wounds will heal. Maybe we wouldn't have assumed that a slit throat would heal, but we would have learned the healing factor was a thing. So how many other things could we have learned if we'd been paying attention and we've just not noticed? So they agree to meet and go over things uh, basically the next day. Although there is a very important scene, though, with one of the characters going down... Uh, down to the woods. And yeah, to talk to Walter, basically. Uh... I don't understand, I'm, uh, you know, am I supposed to stop them from putting this stuff together? Or is this what you want? Walter, please, are you out there? Can you hear me? Um, interesting little moment. And obviously one of the other characters uh, witnesses this, overhears what he's saying. So definitely a thread to be pulled upon later. Um, it, it doesn't sound to me like he's complicit. It sounds like he's been given a role that he is, you know... It feels like he has a an extra task that the others don't know yeah. about. But, but then I'm wondering, it, do they all have a task that the others don't know about? But it doesn't sound like he understands it that much. It just kind of sounds like he's trying to do whatever he's been asked of him, but he doesn't really know what his goal know is. what he's been asked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then we actually get their, their whiteboard kind of page, which is just like a summary of all this, the rules and things we've learned, which was very convenient if you'd forgotten any of them, which was nice. Um, mm -hmm. I also kind of like some of the questions they wrote on this. Uh, you know, for example, like, was Walter ever just a normal human? How old is he? You know, has he always just been something else? Uh, stuff like that. I like the ultra-terrestrial. Just no. 
Yeah. Uh, flash tornado is a fun phrase. Uh, so. But it is. You know, why would he go to high school or college? Uh, they also, at some point in the issue, like, ask the question, like, he's probably at least partially responsible for what happened to everyone else. Like, you know, if, if he knew this was coming and he picked all of us this way, whatever's happened, he, you know, he at least knew about it. Possibly is yeah. responsible. And it's, it's the more this mystery goes on, the more fascinating it gets. Because obviously we learned last issue about none of them remember how they got here. Not really. Yeah, yeah. It was all kind of a haze. Uh, and then, you know, they're assuming they're in Wisconsin, but then they, you know, as it points on this whiteboard, but there are mountains there and then there are no mountains. So where are we? You know, where, where are we actually? Yeah. And then it's so interesting. They start revealing things they've discovered. And uh, a couple of the characters who found the guns, like the locker, and then the library, reveal this. And, you know, understandably, it didn't like the idea of everyone who's on edge having access to assault rifles, as they, you know, one of them points out later, when it, when they're comparing the other guy keeping the, the other place a secret. She's like, well, maybe it means make sense, because I didn't want everyone to have assault rifles. And the fact that one of the Joker guys is kind of like, oh, we should shoot each other since we can heal. <laughs> it's like, take the gun away from him right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they probably made the right choice not telling everyone. Yeah, yeah, but there's explosives and stuff. But what's really neat about this is that so the character f- from issue three who found the the you know the other building he said there's another house. And it's, it's the way that everyone looks at him when he says that <laughs> the other house in the lake. It's like it's uh, the phrase "other house" specifically, yeah. not just there's a building or structure. It's house. Yeah. But then, but then he kind of clarifies. Well, I don't even know if it's a house. It may just be a sculpture. <laughs> it's like it's like you know because it has a weird mm. shape. And there was no entrance, so it's like, you know, what is it exactly? So they're like, well... Well, they argue for a bit, but then they're like, well, we should go out there. Like, we have these explosives and stuff. Let's see if we can, like, try and make sense of it. Can we go back out there? So they do. It's when they're on the boat, actually, that we get the uh, the anecdote about the, the stars and how they're not moving like they should be. They're kind of locked to the earth in a way that they shouldn't be. Which it implies to me that, like I say, you know, time's not passing. They, they don't quite get to that leap here, but they talk about how it should move with time, and you know, it's not quite still, and we sh- you should be able to tell time from it. But they can't. It's like they're on just like the same day perpetually. Yeah, I, either that or it's just fake. Like it's just not really the the stars. It's, it's just, projection. Yeah. yeah, it's just a static thing, and it's it's sort of a detail they never thought to fake because they didn't think anyone would notice that. You know, but unlucky for them, someone actually knows their. It seems it seems strange to not think that they'll notice because Walter obviously invited these people. He knows that they were into well. This... Al- alternatively, it is an intentional clue that they want them to notice. Is another yes, that's more likely. I would say, given that uh, you know, they actually mentioned that they, you know they told Walter about this in the past that, that they've had this conversation, and Walter seems like he remembers all these things, right? Yeah. So, more likely a clue. So they get to the the building, the guy's like super excited about trying the gun on the on the glass, because uh, it feels like glass, they, they say, uh, the walls. And the bullets do nothing, and they're like, well, we'll go for the explosives then. And they set explosives, and it makes a crater in front of the building, but the actual, you know, building itself is undamaged, unfazed, one might say. But then someone notices that the symbols on each of these sculptures in this courtyard are all their symbols that they've been given. So they decide to try something with that. So they all put their fingers on the, on their corresponding symbols. It doesn't do anything until one of them suggests, what if we, like, ask it something? Like, what if we sort of, like, make a request? And sure enough, it opens a, a door in the house. And... We knew there was someone in there. You know, that was the big cliffhanger to the end of issue three, was that Reg, who we've heard about quite a bit via multiple character flashbacks and, and stories, uh, is in there. And he's like, hey, I was hoping you guys would figure this out quicker. I've been in there since day one. Of course, I was invited. And it's it's this big mystery thing. It's like, well, clearly they were meant to like find him at some point and get him out. There's a lot of details to this that... he kn- He knows a lot more than they do. Well, he knows something more than they do. I don't know how much more he knows, but he knows one thing more than they do, at least. I would say probably two things more than they do, because he, he knew that they were going to figure... They He knew that they could open this, like that they could open it, which obviously they didn't even know that this was a thing. 
and then obviously the big cliffhanger. So I'd say he maybe inside there he's had a bit more information than they have. Yeah, but why was he trapped in this thing? Why was he put in separately? Is it just because it's part of the game that's been played with them? It's part of the puzzle? Uh, whatever. But, yeah, so the ending. So it's the first time since issue one we get the little character. This is the painter uh, as Reg. And he says there's still time to save the world. And that's the big cliffhanger that they can still save things. Which probably leads into the we're still kind of stuck in the same day theory. Because... If time's not actually moving forward, if we're actually right before this crisis, whatever it is that's going to cause everything, maybe they do have time to actually save everything. Possibly. I think it's so interesting, because even I'm not convinced by that theory, even though I'm the one that brought it up. Yeah, I... It was just it was something that crossed my mind, but I'm not convinced by it, because there's still the stuff like the, uh, the, the, the prologue sequences of every issue that are clearly set in the future. Set in the future in their bubble. I mean, you know, they, they've been there for years, but doesn't that, mean that's that, true. Doesn't mean every time has moved on. I, I mean, what, what if this is? What, what? I mean, what if this obviously all appears dark and sinister, but the story is actually get you know twelve, thirteen people together who can figure out a way to save the world. Like that's what he was choosing all this time was people who might be able to save it. <laughs> I mean, that that's a. I mean, it's a, maybe it's a stretch, but it's frustrating because part of it is. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. That you know, he's intentionally chosen a lot of smart people, right? Yeah, with different skills, uh, you know, different, you know, different elements. skills, but presumably complementary skills. But also, there is an element of he chose people he liked. We we know that because he was had he had that conversation. It was the last issue where it was he was struggling to choose. But if I let you in, do I have to open up more people? Because there's more people I like that I was expecting to. There's um. I think the one thing that I will definitely say is that it does feel like they're supposed to be solving things, even though they were told when they arrived that, oh, just live here, just, you know, enjoy the house, enjoy all the, the, the free stuff forever, uh, you'll get everything you ever need. But it does feel like all these clues, all of these things they're supposed to solve, it's almost like, it's almost like a, like a, you know, a, a psychological test of, like, not telling them they're supposed to do that, but the expectation and the desire is for them to do that at a certain point. Yeah. And, Ultimately, maybe they'll be good enough people that they'll yeah. want to do that. And part and part of it is the, to see how long it takes them to make those choices. and the, Or maybe part of it is that to succeed in whatever this test is, they have to get to the point where they make the choice to do it of their own free will rather than being told, hey, here's a list of instructions. This is what you have to do. Could be, yeah. yeah there's, there's a lot going on that, and there's a lot of different possibilities that it could still be that I'm not settled on any one thing right now. No, no, it's it it very open. It's very, very open. Um, but it continues to get more intriguing, and I think I like this issue a lot because I love the idea of them finally saying, look, we have to actually try and figure this out. And it was simple problem solving. Like, the rest of them finding out about the second building is, like, okay, and we have these these weapons, we have these explosives, maybe we can do something with that. Um, turns out those were useless against it, but it's that sort of problem solving. It's that sort of coming together and putting their heads together that I like. It leads to the question, if it wasn't for getting into this building, what are they there for? And they've already pointed out that they can't hurt each other, really. Right. But they've got to have a purpose, otherwise why give it to them? Yeah. I mean, it can cause pain. Like, I mean, it's, you know, they do feel the pain of yeah. these things. I mean, they ask the person who slit their throat at that, but... Um, he's very nonchalant about it all he's like yeah yeah whatever who cares yeah so, so no I mean it's hard not to be excited now this is not the issue before the break I believe I think there's one more uh, this was issue 5 that sounds right so yeah I mean it's a 12 issue thing right so I mean I have to imagine yeah. well as it's 13 now that we have a 13th character I mean <laughs> I mean <laughs> a little surprise 13th issue <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't uh, shock does me does it say think. of 12 on the front it may do, I don't know, I can't remember. If, they've, if, they've, if it says that, it doesn't. It just says book five. Like, you know how ah, some, some of the yes. DC's limited series will say issue X of X, whereas this is just book five. Maybe, maybe there is 13 issues. Yeah. It's, it's been a secret. Very curious, very curious. Uh, but, yeah, there you go. That's... Uh... That's nice to know, like, uh, very good. And obviously, we didn't even mention the art, really, but I mean, obviously, it's still phenomenal. Yeah, it, 
you know, I think one of my favourite panels is them all sitting together on the boat, because again, it's another sort of visual of them all being united on something, which they've never really been since the start of this. It's on the, the two-page splash, it's just across yeah. the top. Yeah, it's, it's just a really nice visual. Um, but, you know, moments like when they all look at the guy who found the house when he emits it, when he says, oh yeah, the second house in the lake. The way, the, the moment works so well because the art really gets across that they're all staring at him like, the yeah, F you just it's, say? <laughs> it's beats like that which separate good comic artists, good interior artists from just good, you know, artists. Because it's not about just, you know, the, the making the splash, making this look cool. It's it's mm. about the actual storytelling and about, you know, the getting the right beat at the right moment. And I think that's where uh, Martinez is, is really killing it on this. Yeah. All right, what are you rating Nice in the Lake issue 5? Yeah, it's a 9 from me. Yeah, I agree on this one, then out of 10. <laughs> 